Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's video is about the ENFP's steadiness, or rather lack thereof. So this video will discuss a key complaint that I've heard from almost every single ENFP that I've interacted with. All ENFPs, freedom loving as they are, diverse as they are, honest and wild as they are, passionate as they are, stress and struggle and feel anxious over a feeling of lack of steadiness. And this worry about steadiness brings up one key cognitive function, namely the inferior function. So it brings up the ENFP's repressed ISTJ side. So an important distinction here is ENFPs don't value organization, but they hate disorganization. ENFPs don't value being productive, but they hate being unproductive. ENFPs don't value definitions and uh, in following instructions, but they hate knowing they went against the book. ENFPs don't like and value logic, but they hate the thought of doing something illogically. So the inferior function manifests itself as something we do not want to do. We do not want to make the mistakes uh, that the inferior function warns us about. The inferior function is a break. It says, <coughs> and the dominant functions, they are flow, so they feel effortless, they feel fun, they feel enjoyable, they are our engine, so they make us move forward. Basically, they are putting us forward in life, they're making things happen, they're making things better, they're making life more enjoyable and more valuable. At the same time as we're racing towards life in flow, we find ourselves neglecting our inferior function. And inferior neglect has one key problem. The inferior function has a tendency to hang over our shoulders as a looming dark cloud. It's like always there, it's always reminding us, did I clean my room yet? Did I read instructions? Did I break any rules? Did I do something that was stupid? Did I say something I shouldn't have? Did I get too passionate? Was I wasting time? What I, was I doing something fruitless that wouldn't lead anywhere? Yeah, the inferior function is this looming dark cloud that tells us what we should be doing. And so what I've identified is three different approaches to the inferior function. And I mentioned this in the INFP effectiveness video. Either we worry excessively about the inferior function and we're constantly thinking, oh, I should be, I should be, I should be engaging in the inferior as soon as I've stopped wanting to have fun, as soon as I've stopped wanting to be free, as soon as I've stopped wanting to be honest and to be and do things that I like and uh, that fit with my natural motivation. I'm, I'm gonna do it. That second, that's the approach number two. Approach number two is, uh, coming up with this great brand plan. I'm gonna be so much more productive. I'm gonna be so much more organized. I'm gonna make a list right now and I'm gonna brainstorm and I'm gonna put down everything I want to do, everything I'm gonna do uh, that will fix the problems of the inferior function. Yeah, writing that list, brainstorming, coming up with that and then failing extremely to follow through on it. You write a list and then you go on and you do and live your life as you normally did and the inferior function remains forgotten. Or thirdly, we become taken over or in, fall in the grip of the inferior function and we live our life slaving under it. We are constantly denying ourselves flow. We are constantly living life while pushing on the brakes. I wish I could be free. I wish I could do what I want to do. I wish I could be passionate and say what's on my mind. I wish that I could have variation and change. But right now I gotta follow the rules. Right now I gotta focus on what's smart and realistic and productive. 
yeah, I gotta keep true to this organization. I, I've got a schedule to follow. I've got places to be at certain times. So, yeah. And you know, that's the key route to depression. The inferior function, if it takes over your priorities, is the key route to depression. Going too far into it, letting it take over your life, letting it uh, dominate your priorities, that's the key to unhappiness and the feeling of constant stress and anxiety and a feeling of lack of flow or happiness. A feeling of being drained, of constantly being exhausted, of constantly lacking meaning and not seeing the purpose in what you do. The inferior function can be fed by certain things. For example, we can enjoy engaging in the inferior function if other people say, Wow, that's a good job. Wow, that's great. Oh my god, your room is so clean. How did it get so clean? Yeah, we can enjoy the inferior function if it becomes a secondary motivation. If our parents become happy with us, if we get candy, if we get uh, some kind of reward, if we can go out drinking afterwards, you know. Like all those secondary motivation sources, if I can drink Red Bull while doing it. All those things that give a sense of fake energy and fake motivation. That can compensate somewhat for the stress of the inferior function and the boredom of it, the shared boredom of having to do it, the routineliness, the, the yeah, you get the point. But that shouldn't be how we do it. We shouldn't be slaving away at our life doing things we dislike just because other people want us to, just because it make other people happy. And what's more, we should find a better way to do it. Yes, the inferior function represents necessary things. We do need a clean and orderly room at home. But maybe we can invest in a cleaning service. <laughs> yes, we do need to spend our time in productive ways and make sure we don't waste resources on and money and stupid things. But at least 80% of what I do should come because I enjoy it and because I find it to be naturally fun to do. Not because uh, it is smart, not because it uh, pays well. At least 80% of your decision should be based on what you love. And then the tw other 20%, that can be what you know is important and what you acknowledge is necessary. I believe that I believe in that 80-20 approach to life because it uh, shows you who's boss, what's most important to you. And it also becomes a motivation. Those 20% become more important because of the 80%. Because we know as soon as I've paid my bills, as soon as I've uh, come that back from work, as soon as I've uh, done this and that, I can spend most of my day doing what I love. As soon as uh, I've taking on and follow through in my responsibilities in life. I can be free and I can just say and do what I want and I can just go out and have fun and just be me. Yeah, I do believe uh, it's easier to engage in the inferior function when you know that there is something good to come from it. When you know that it feeds into your natural motivation and becomes a support of it. Yeah, I think the inferior function is meant to be that break we push down on the car to avoid hitting into somebody or hurting somebody or doing something stupid or expen excessively spending our resources or yeah, doing something crazy. I do believe that break serves an important function, but I don't believe in living solely by pushing the break, by constantly driving backwards. I do believe that we should seek to move forward and forward needs to be what you think is forward and what you think is fun and what you think is valuable. So don't worry so much about your sense of lack of uh, steadiness. Focus on how to ensure a freedom that doesn't feel shaky but a freedom that feels permanent. Focus on finding an honesty that doesn't feel improductive or lazy but that feels endurable and strong in its own way. Focus on finding a passion that you can engage in and scream for and speak out for and uh, care about deeply that doesn't uh, 
feel illogical or impossible or completely unrealistic. Focus on getting daily variation and change in a way that doesn't feel too disorganized or unstable or crazy or chaotic. I think that's the best way to dealing with the inferior function. If you have any alternative appro uh, approaches, if you've found out any good strategies to help out your fellow ENFPs, feel free to write them down in the comment down below. Thanks for watching this video and if you like this video, please visit patreon.com slash ericdor and leave a subscription or a donation. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video and share it with others that you think might like it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.